to the illiterate. Why should we weep for him? He cried enough for himself. The national tear duck from Weeping Water, Nebraska flooded the whole nation like a one-man Mississippi. You know what he was? A Barnum Bunkum Bible beating You know what figures? My best performance and he misses? Oh. <laughs> Awesome. We love to sing and laugh. Oh, would you shut up, you stupid bunnies? And if you ever piss us off, we'll saw your ass in half. Well, that was uncalled for. Well, anyway, here is Gary Tillotson showing us some more of Hollywood's hidden gems. Ugh. Welcome to Hidden Gems, where we discuss and analyze films largely ignored by the film viewing community. I'm your host, Gary Tillotson. Tonight, we will be examining an independent film that was released fairly recently, The Planet of the Rabbits, written and directed by Mopsy and Cottontail Rabbit, the oft-forgotten middle siblings of the famous Rabbit family, you know, Peter Rabbit and them. The film starts off with two astronauts beginning a 20-year mission to find potable water elsewhere in the solar system, with one of the astronauts bearing more than a passing resemblance to Colonel Sanders. You know, Chuck, this is going to be a very dangerous mission. I know, Ed. I just want to say that uh, if one of us doesn't make it back alive, I hope it's you. Uh, well, thanks, Ed. Before he goes off on his mission, his wife, played by a woman with an oddly deep voice, makes one final plea to him to not go. Please, Charles, I am telling you, this mission is too dangerous. You've got a wife and kids at home to think about. Please, for the love of God, Charles, don't do this. I gotta do it, Maud. How else are we gonna get clean, drinkable water when the fresh water on Earth runs out? Well, scientists have been developing. Maud, trust me, I have to do this. It's the only way. Fine, fine. If you want to be a jackass about this, fine. Go on your dangerous mission. But if you get killed out there, don't come crying to me. Little do they realize that the mission has been sabotaged by a tiny little businessman with big political aspirations. I'm going to sabotage the mission. Then they're gonna die or get lost or whatever. And then I'll start my campaign. I'll blame the current president, call him incompetent, and make the people distrust him and all my opponents. My campaign is gonna be rooted in fear mongering and racism, and people are gonna be so scared and so stupid that they'll vote for me and then I'll win. This is the greatest plan I've ever come up with. It's tremendous. I love it. That seem always seemed a little on the nose to me. Well, anyway, as a result of his sabotage, the ship does indeed get lost in space. My god, we're lost! And they end up crashing onto a strange new planet. Colonel Sanders dies of a heart attack upon landing, so our main character goes out exploring on his own. 
What is this place? Tag, you're it! Oh, I'm gonna get you! So, uh, anyway, uh, that's why cats don't wash. Here's my contact lens. Whoa, what are you? Woo! I'm, <clears throat> I'm a human being from the planet Earth. <gasps> you speak rabbit! Well, we like guess so, uh, except on Earth we call it English. What a silly name for a language! Uh, yeah, uh, say listen, uh, uh, I was on a ship looking for fresh water for my planet, and uh, somehow uh, we got lost, uh, lost control of the ship, and uh, crashed here on your planet. Uh, uh, which planet is this anyway? This is the planet Angora! Uh, is there any way I can get back to Earth, uh, someone who can fix my ship, or uh, lend me one of their own, uh, anything? We can ask the queen. She knows everything. And she's always willing to help her subjects. So the little bunny girl takes him to the queen. But things don't go so well for him. Are you sure your queen will be willing to help me? Of course. She's the kindest, most generous rabbit in all the galaxy. Oh, your majesty! hard-looking creature that has been brought before me. He's a human being, your majesty. One of many varieties of earthling. Eek! He is disgusting. I cannot allow such a creature to exist on my planet. No, that simply will not do. Guards, seize him! Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, now wait a minute, wait a minute, your majesty. I, I don't want to stay here. I, I want to go back home to my, to my home planet. That's why I'm here before you, uh, Your Majesty, to, to ask if you could help me. Oh, of course I can get you back to Earth. Oh, thank you so much. But I can't send you back looking like that. That could be seen as an insult to the other Earth creatures. Oh, no, I wouldn't want to risk that. Guards, take him to the laboratory. What? Uh, no! Don't worry, sir. We've done this before. Uh, granted, never with a human being, but we have done it. Uh, we are in competent hands. Come on. No! And then comes the big reveal at the end. A reveal so shocking that those with delicate stomachs might want to leave the room. Was the operation a success, Dr. Hickenlooper? Oh, yes, my liege. See for yourself. Now, while some may find the plot a little far-fetched and the acting a little hammy, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and so I give it my highest rating of five carrots. Tune in next week when I'll be reviewing a documentary about the evolution of cabbage. Until then, from all of us here at Hidden Gems... Good night and God bless. Oh, and now for my next trick. Boo, you suck! Is there anyone else who would care to crack wise? Good. And now for some brief commercial messages. I'd do anything for Dixieland bread. Why, well, I'd even sell my soul to the devil. You cold, Colonel Baby. Although, uh, all I really have to do is, uh, uh go to the corner store and, uh, buy some. Uh, uh, I won't be needing you today, Mr. Beelzebub. Uh, yeah! 
I do wish people would stop taking my name in vain. It's a lame bread. Uh, I mean, it's good and all, but is it really worth your immortal soul? And now we give you our roving reporter, Nicholas Parsnips, interviewing Mr. Bunny Hill. <laughs> hey, hey, you, get off the set! Yeah. <clears throat> Good evening. I'm Nicholas Parsnips. Tonight, I'll be interviewing a legendary entertainer, Mr. Bunny Hill. Hiya. Now, Mr. Hill, you've got a new project that you've just, uh, you, you just finished, correct? Yes. Yes, and, uh, well, uh, this project is, uh, very different from, uh, what you usually do. Yes. Because you are, you're primarily known as a comedian. Yes. Now, we happen to have a clip from one of your shows to, uh, you know, for the, those in the audience who may be unfamiliar with your, uh, comedic stylings. Roll it. Say, uh, Warden, uh, do you have any sexy pictures of your wife in the nude? Certainly not. I see. Would you like to buy some? Why, you uh, merp. stuff. Now, anyway, uh, as, you, as, you, as you told me before we began our uh, uh, taping, this, this new project of yours is uh, more uh, dramatic in nature. Yes. Now, we have a clip. Clip, schmip, show them the whole thing. It's short. Very well, then. Uh, here is Mr. Hill's latest project, which he is titled The Room. How did I end up here? Cut down in the prime of my life? How did I do it? Hey babe, how's it going? Huh. I want to be left alone. I'll just go to Moe's then, I guess. Everybody do the tick! My overcraft is full of beans. Why can't rabbits appreciate fine art the way the cookies do? I'm nobody. Who are you? Pull the string. Dance to that. A mistake is made.
somebody. She has achieved nothingness, and therefore has accomplished more than most men dare to dream of. She is now more dangerous than somebody, than any somebody. Oh, oh my splifter, blachter, blachter. Who shot me in my hiney? If I do it, I get a whipping. Mr. Hill, uh, I have uh, a couple of questions for you. Uh, one, uh, what type of drugs were you taking when you made that film? And two, where can I get some? Hey, uh, I did not come here to be insulted. Well, then what did you come here for? I came here to see that hypnotist dude. <laughs> Or at the very least, that's all I can stand of it. So, we bid you adieu and uh, have a good life or whatever. Thank you.